this video is sponsored by Onshape. You've probably seen this clip before. Oh my God. But have you ever wondered who the guy throwing the ball is? You should, because he might be just as important to Tesla as Elon Musk himself. His name is Franz von Holzhausen, and he is the lead designer for Tesla. Most importantly, his designs changed our perception of electric vehicles, changing them from weird frog-like transformer cars to elegantly refined pieces of technology. And he managed to do this while saving Tesla from bankruptcy twice. On top of all that, the Model S and the Model 3 are probably the most important car designs of the last several decades, but success was far from guaranteed. In 2008, Tesla was in trouble. They just launched the Tesla Roadster, and even Elon Musk admits that the car was a disaster. The harsh truth is that Tesla was about to go bankrupt in the winter of 2008. I declare bankruptcy! They needed a visionary to set things straight if they wanted the business to survive. That is when Elon Musk attempted to hire Franz von Holzhausen so he could work on the Model S. After working in car design for several decades, Franz had established himself as one of the best in the world. He helped design the new Beetle concept, as well as the Pontiac Solstice and the Saturn Sky. He later joined Mazda in 2005 as a lead designer, where he's best known for the Mazda Furai concept. When joining Tesla, Franz took a huge risk, but he was tired of working at major car companies making the same old safe designs in the same old corporate settings. Keep in mind, at this point in time, there had been no large-scale successful American car companies that were founded after World War II. Pretty much all of them fizzled out after a few years, and there was no clear reason for Franz to believe that Tesla was any different. Most big car companies are old. They have a design legacy, such as the BMW Kidney Grill or the Porsche Silhouette. All of that history is baked into the design, so the designers have to adhere to the brand's conventions and heritage. Because Tesla was a startup, there was no heritage and there were no constraints, so it was probably hard to know where to start, but Franz had a plan. While other brands were focused on retaining the brand image of their nostalgic past, Franz was focusing on where car design could go in the future, while still tying it to a visual signature that people were familiar with. This is a really tough balance because you don't want to create something that's weird and alienating like so many other electric vehicles. But you also don't want to create something that's just too bland or boring. This is called the Maya Principle, coined by Raymond Lowy. Now, I'm a designer and I've worked in the field for over a decade, but I couldn't have done this video without my friend and fellow design professor, Rafi Manassian. He's been a car designer and historian for over 40 years, working with companies like Rolls-Royce, Toyota, Subaru, and probably about 200 other companies. It's important to note that Franz didn't have to start entirely from scratch. He was able to ground the design in something familiar yet beautiful. He took inspiration from Aston Martins of the mid-2000s. The Aston Martin DB9 was designed by Henrik Fisker, and Fisker also did some consulting work on the Model S before they hired Franz, so you can definitely see the influence there. Franz had a solid foundation, but he needed to make the Model S stand out by going even more minimalistic. He was experimenting with how much you can take away without losing the essence of the car. If you look at most other modern car designs, it's kind of the opposite. It's all about adding as many creases and lines and material changes as possible in order to stand out. Franz focused on clean, uninterrupted flowing surfaces and great proportions. And that makes sense. If the car is all about clean energy and clean air and efficiency, this should be demonstrated in the way it looks and the way it functions. The Tesla has a completely different architecture compared to gas-powered vehicles, and Franz focused on highlighting that. The battery is at the bottom of the car, and the motors are between the wheels, so there's no combustion engine under the hood, like normal cars. So Franz was able to stretch the side glass and windshield and A-pillar way further forward, because once again, there's no engine in the way. This is probably one of the biggest visual icons of the whole design. It's one continuously flowing curb, whereas most other vehicles sort of go straight and then up and then push back. The big windshield and side glass pulling so far forward is beautiful, but it's also very functional. It gives you a massive panoramic and open view when you're in the car. Franz was also able to make the hood of the car much lower compared to other similar vehicles in the same category as well. There's even a part of the hood that goes completely concave, which is not something that you see very often in gas-powered cars 
because they need to make space for that engine. The low hood makes the flared out fenders look even bigger and more dramatic as well. Holzhausen made the front part of the vehicle look even more low and exaggerated and wedge shaped by contrasting it with a very high rear fender. That's why you have this beautiful shelf over the back wheel. This rear haunch is basically like the tensed back legs of a cheetah in mid stride or getting ready to strike. The flared out fenders and wedge shape is really nothing new in car design. You see it everywhere, but Tesla executes it in a new way that's only possible because it's an electric vehicle. For the interior, you can really see his minimalistic tech aesthetic push through, especially with the screen based user interface. This reflects what most people of our generation are very comfortable with, our smartphones. Now, I don't agree with the touchscreen, by the way. I think it makes sense in terms of tapping into our generation's reliance on smartphones, and it does help to make the car feel like an advanced piece of technology, but it's kind of important to be able to feel physical buttons without looking when you're driving. Franz's choice to do this is a pretty bold move, and I respect it though. One bold move that I would respect from you is for you to hit the red button below and subscribe. It's free, you can always unsubscribe if you change your mind later, but back to the video. There are also more subtle examples of tech influence, like how the door handles are flush with the surface of the vehicle. It's all very reminiscent of the design approach you'd see at a company like Apple, where they remove all of the ports and any surfaces that stick out, even at the expense of function sometimes. Von Holzhausen's ruthless minimalist approach bleeds into other aspects of the design. For example, Tesla has ultrasonic sensors in their cars for self-driving mode. Most ultrasonic sensors on cars are visible and open, but on a Tesla, they're actually embedded behind the metal. You can't see them. I feel really, really bad for Tesla's engineers because I'm sure this was really difficult to do, but they pulled it off, so props to them. This is a great example of how great design needs support from the entire company in order to succeed. The Model S wouldn't be half the car it was without a great team beyond just the design studio. The designers have the vision, but the engineers and everybody else in the company has to be competent enough to execute on it. Another really special thing about the Model S or any great car design is how the lines lead your eye around the form in an almost circular motion. It's a subtle form of visual entertainment and you want to keep looking at it. As soon as you have a fixed point on an object to focus on, the fun is over, so you go look at something else. That's why most car designs focus on making your eye move around the vehicle. It's a car after all, and it should feel like it's moving even when it's standing still. These are subtle things that an average customer is probably never going to notice consciously, but it's just enough to make the design feel like something unique and recognizable, even though you can't quite put it into words. The Model S was the most advanced yet acceptable car for the time, and because of that, it's a design that will probably be remembered for decades to come. Another thing about Tesla that makes them feel like more of an established tech company rather than a car company is the way that they manage their end-to-end -end experience. When you walk up to the car, it invites you in by by having the side mirrors and door handles flip open, just like your phone greets you at the lock screen when you put it up to your face. When you open the door, the details on the inside echo what's happening on the outside of the vehicle. This goes beyond the car as well. If you look at the key fob, it's got the same flowing lines that you see on the car. Even if you go to a Tesla dealership, you'll notice that same clean, minimal aesthetic. That's because Tesla is one of the very few car companies that sells directly to customers, whereas most other car dealerships are actually like third-party middlemen. So the car manufacturers actually have very little control over what the stores actually look like. Another reason why Tesla is so successful successful is because it wanted to make electric cars fun. Tesla wanted to be a crazy fun luxury car brand whose car also happened to be good for the environment. It's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. Mm. Make its maximum fun. Now, this plays on a cultural expectation that many Americans and people all over the world have about their cars. Even if it's better for the environment, they don't want a boring, responsible vehicle. They want to have fun. And I've driven in a Model S before, and I can confirm it is an absolute blast to drive. That was the first time Franz saved Tesla from bankruptcy with his designs. At this point, all of the other car companies were scrambling to catch up, but Franz wasn't finished yet. Before we move into the Model 3 design analysis, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Onshape. Onshape is an exceptionally well-designed cloud-native 3D CAD software. Before I took Onshape on as a sponsor, I talked to about a dozen of my friends who use Onshape regularly, and they had nothing but good things to say about it. The interface is far more intuitive than competitors, and it's not bloated with a bunch of unnecessary features or administrative setup and maintenance. In fact, Onshape was created by the same founders of SolidWorks because they 
recognize product designers still face many challenges related to their CAS system. And the best way to address those problems was to start from scratch with a new company. If you've ever collaborated in multidisciplinary teams, you know how easy it is for your ideas to get lost in translation. Onshape isn't just a 3D CAD tool. It's a collaborative platform that allows you to talk with your team effectively and get things done faster so you can design better products. Go check out the link in the description below to learn more about Onshape. It's a great 3D CAD tool and I highly recommend it. Franz continued to refine the Model S and he launched the Model X, but things got really crazy when he decided to launch the Model 3. Tesla was once again facing the looming threat of bankruptcy for the second time. While making the Model 3, Tesla was running into major production issues to the point where it almost put them out of business. One thing you have to remember is that cars are made up of thousands of little pieces. Every single one of those pieces needs to be designed and analyzed from both a functional and aesthetic perspective. On top of that, each of these parts need to actually fit together with other parts. And then on top of that, you need to be able to make these parts reliably and in the same exact way thousands and thousands of times in a row. Even things with fairly simple construction are a pain to manufacture because of all the logistical nightmares that can happen when you're dealing with international supply chains. I want to point this out because these cards are not just a design triumph, they're a spectacular engineering triumph. I know that Tesla has had some major quality control issues in the past, and I'm not making excuses for them, but I also understand how hard it is to make a product that's this level of complexity. Other car companies have spent decades refining that part of their process, and Tesla had to start completely from scratch. It's one thing to design a beautiful car, but it's something else entirely to actually get everyone to collaborate and work together to actually make hundreds of thousands of them. The Model 3 was designed to be universal and needed to cater to all markets. The design is pretty similar to the Model S and that was very, very intentional. Because Tesla is a new company without an established heritage like other car companies, they needed to amplify their brand presence on the road. And they do this by making every car in their lineup look very similar, except for the Cybertruck. But don't worry, we're gonna get to the Cybertruck in a bit. I got a lot to say there. If every Tesla looks more or less the same, it makes a greater imprint in your mind. It's kind of like how Apple has been using white earbuds for over a decade. It's the same exact thing with Tesla. Their designs have barely changed over the last 15 years. Compare the Model S from 2009 and the most recent one. Then compare that with how much BMWs have changed over that same time period. The Model 3 took a lot of the minimalist cues from the Model S and pushed them even further. By far the most striking thing about the Model 3 is that it has no grille. This is certainly not the first car to do this. It's been going on since at least the 1950s, probably way earlier than that even. But I think that this is most significant for the Model 3 because it demonstrates in no uncertain terms that this is an electric vehicle. If you don't have a grill, it implies that there's no need to cool a combustion engine underneath the hood. It also shows von Holthausen's commitment to a minimalist aesthetic. If there's no functional reason for a grill, then you take it out. This is very different from other electric cars that still decide to include a grill because it's just an accepted design detail in cars. This is a pretty bold move when you think about how other car companies have been making their grills absolutely massive over the years. Once again, I'm looking at you, BMW. A car's grill is one of its most recognizable visual icons. So by taking the grill away entirely, the Model 3 immediately stands out. In short, the Model 3 basically took the Model S and made it available to the masses. Don't get me wrong, at about 50 grand, the Model 3 still isn't cheap, but it's far more accessible than the Model S, which goes for around twice that price. The Model 3 was a huge success and they've been selling like hotcakes. One interesting thing that Rafi mentioned about Teslas is that we don't really think of them as American cars. They have such a strong European influence in terms of design that it's easy to forget that. It's worth mentioning that in spite of von Holthausen's name sounding insanely German, he actually was born in Connecticut, that's in the USA. Franz and the team at Tesla narrowly escaped bankruptcy once again, and other car manufacturers were still scrambling to catch up. And so we arrive at the present. Oh my God, well. Where Tesla's market share is absolutely roaring, as more and more Teslas can be seen driving down the road, one has to wonder, what's next? Now that Tesla has an established design legacy, you would expect them to stick with it. And you would be largely correct if you guessed that. But 
the daring and experimental spirit of Tesla doesn't just let them stick with one design style for the rest of their days as a company. You might have figured out that Franz is a fan of minimalism, and the Cybertruck is sort of this cartoony, satirical extreme of that. I'm honestly not sure how much involvement Franz had with the design. If he did design it, I'm genuinely impressed. Not because it's good, because it literally goes against every instinct that I have as a designer, and I'm sure he felt those instincts even more strongly than I do. It must have been a real challenge for him to push past all of what he's relied on over the past 30 years in the attempt to create something new. To be fair, I do think the stainless steel exoskeleton is a really clever innovation, but to me, the proportions are just really odd. I also have major concerns around how practical the vehicle is. Most obviously, the thing is huge and the architecture is quite different from any other car, so I just don't see it being very easy to drive. I think the bottom line is that the Cybertruck was a design that was meant to be more of a meme than an actual product. Cybertruck was really just a vessel for creating marketing hype around Tesla. It was never really about the merit of the product itself. Apparently, they're having lots of issues with production, and I'm not even sure if this thing will ever be street legal with all of those hard edges. One of my first ever videos on this channel was about the Cybertruck, if you want to check it out. The production value of that video is not nearly as good as my newer videos, but the actual content is pretty much how I feel still today about the car. There are cool elements to the design, and I respect the risk that the Tesla team took, but I just don't really think the design makes any sense. I think the biggest thing I mentioned about the Cybertruck back in my 2019 video is that it hints at a post-apocalyptic future that I just don't want to be a part of. Look at all the things that have happened since the Cybertruck got launched in November of 2019. Disease. War. Weird presidential behavior. Maybe buying a Cybertruck is sort of a way to cope with that potential future. I don't know. But I just don't think the vehicle will have staying power in the long term. But who knows? I've been wrong before. I could be wrong here. One thing I will say is that Franz and the team are staying one step ahead of the competition. But at least in the case of the Cybertruck, I have to ask myself if different means good. What does the future hold for Tesla and for Franz von Holzhausen? One thing is for certain, Tesla is the only new American car company to actually succeed in the last 50 years at creating mass-produced cars. With the design language they have in place, it seems like nothing's going to stop them. They found the perfect design formula that markets itself and people are proud to drive. And if that wasn't enough, Tesla's team has found the balance between designing for their existing customers while at the same time experimenting with concepts like the Cybertruck. Say what you will about Tesla and Elon, but I have nothing but respect for Franz von Holzhausen. Tesla has left a design legacy that will probably be remembered for decades. I believe that these will be design icons. I also think that the tech-based aesthetic has been a major influence in other parts of the design world, especially for autonomous vehicles like Zoox, Cruise, and Waymo. They pushed the techie smartphone aesthetic even further than Tesla did. It's going to be interesting to see how Tesla handles the increased competition over the next few years as big automakers catch up to the electric vehicle craze. Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can also support me on Patreon below, and I hope you have a great day.